Welcome to the EW Reunion's United at Home series, where we're hoping to bring a little bit of relief into your homes during these complicated times and also raise some funds for several COVID-19 related efforts. This week is a celebration of the iconic soap opera, All My Children. We've brought so many members of the cast together and they've chosen to support Feeding America, which is putting food on the tables of families and those affected by the pandemic across the country. If you're able to donate, please visit ew.com slash allmychildrenreunion. And now sit back and enjoy our return to Pine Valley. The following program. Modern style. From 1970 to 2011, All My Children was one of the most beloved soap operas on television with 41 seasons 10,712 episodes and 360 Emmy nominations. You'd be hard pressed to find a more successful or more iconic show. Welcome to the Entertainment Weekly cast reunion of All My Children. I'm senior TV editor Jared Hall and joining us today, Kelly Ripa, who starred as the troubled party girl, Haley Vaughn, Mark Consuelos, better known as the Pine Valley heartthrob, Mateo Santos, Eva LaRue, AKA the savvy neurologist, Dr. Maria Santos, and Sydney Penny, who played the beautiful but scarred Julia Santos. So glad you're all here and welcome. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> you guys, how's it feel to be back together, even though it's virtually, given the times we're in? Um, I can st I'll start by saying I cannot believe even though I've seen everybody since, how good looking the Santos family remains. <laughs> Frozen in time, I just wanna fall to the floor and duck out of the shot. This is like a family, this is the Santos family reunion. It really More so is. Than, yes, you know, it totally is. is. We're missing a couple, I think. Well, you guys, I would like to go back to the beginning for each of you and, and because obviously these characters had big arcs they went through over the years uh, and, and you know, maybe, uh, changed a bit through the years, but I want to go back to the to the beginning and have each of you describe your character and what you were drawn to in that moment when it was presented to you. Well, it's, it's funny because my original story was that I auditioned for the role of Kendall. Oh. <laughs> Revelation. Isn't oh. that weird? I went in, I, I, know. I auditioned for the role of Kendall a month before I got the audition for the role of Maria. And, um, and it, clearly I, I wasn't a Kendall, but I, uh, a month later, they were like, we really loved your audition, even though you're completely wrong for Kendall, will you audition for this recurring role that we're gonna, it was originally gonna be a recurring, but now we are gonna take it and, um, and make it a contract role. And, um, and they basically, I, I think, it, it, was, it was kind of an audition, but it was more an offer. And they were like, hey, will you come out and do this role of Maria if we turn it into a contract role? Worked out very well for you, I would say. And, and of course, for all the fans. I mean, that's one of those, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if you call it a happy accident, but something along those lines. Something along those lines. And what was great is I was immediately introduced to, uh, to Kelly because Kelly was Uncle Porkchop's um, niece. And he was um, Trevor. Right, he played Trevor. Yeah. Oh my gosh, why am I drawing Trevor. a blank on his real James Kyber. James Kyber. James, James Kyber. Kyber. James Kyber. Yep, and um, and he was the he was my first patient in the hospital, my <laughs> first week that I was there, and so Kelly was in all these scenes with him, and we were in all these scenes together. And do you remember we fell in love? I fell in, in love with Eva immediately. immediately. It was like, here's my person. This is my, yeah. I've, been, we're, I, I've been waiting for you all my life. Exactly. I felt like <laughs> this is my girl, my sister, my long lost blonde sister. It's so true. It was like looking in a mirror. I would look at Eva and say, my God, we're twins. <laughs> I can see that. Sure. <laughs> um, well, Ke Kelly, take me back to when you uh, originally uh, read or learned about this Haley. What were your what were your first impressions of her? Well, uh, you know, it's so funny. Her 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 um, original name was Haley Haley Wells, um, and then they said, "Oh, the character sounds too much like Haley Mills, so we're changing her name to Haley Vaughn." Okay. And I was like, I don't know who anybody is you just mentioned, so <laughs> I'll go with it. Um, I, you know, I wasn't like everybody else in this panel. Everybody else had jobs and careers and they were professional actors. I truly moved to New York 
Um, and I was working at the toy fair and I auditioned sort of on a whim. I was originally dropping off other people's headshots because my side hustle was like dropping, you know, I was just like, I was just dropping off <laughs> other actors' headshots. <laughs> and I was able to um, read for the role of Haley. And I got like six callbacks and two screen tests because they were really sure they wanted me. Um, and so uh, two screen tests later and I wound up getting the job, but it was really, I mean, it was talk about happy accidents. It really was a happy accident that changed, you know, changed my life, changed my entire life, not just mm -hmm. my acting life, but changed my entire, the whole trajectory of my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, similar boat for me. I, I what drew me to the role was that they I had never worked as an actor before, so that was very exciting to get a job. Um, <laughs> they, could have, they could have had me audition for whatever, but yeah, I was you know it was one of my first auditions. I moved to New York. Um, similarly, I had to um, re screen test a few times uh, as well, but um, we were that good. Yes, we were that good. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, on your show, Mark, you've talked about that. You guys showed the audition. The day I met him, I just knew. I knew that he was the guy I was going to marry. And here Can is the, the first clip? meeting. I think we have the first meeting. This is the screen Smell test. Smell a lie a mile away. <laughs> OK, now there's the bad lies and you know the lies you tell to cheat somebody. And then you know there's the little white lies. They're the worst ones because people believe them, and then someone always gets hurt. The clip that we saw that day, was that the first screen test and audition, or was that a later one? That was the subsequent. That was, that the, was the final. That, that was, was the, the final. final. That was the uh, third audition. The third audition. I had three screen tests. Wow, OK. I worked. I would, I would screen test, I would work. And then they're like, yeah, he's not that good. So they screen <laughs> tested a bunch of other guys again. And they're like, yeah, he's still not that great. Um, and then but the there was something one, they kept coming back to. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think they just ran, ran out of people. <laughs> or were you like in in their ear whispering like that guy, that guy? The whole time. I, she I, was already in love. <laughs> we he was were. already straight up in love. She was like. <laughs> we were. I, I mean, but I think like we all bonded with Mark as a cast. You know, Mark was working the whole time, and and so we bonded with him as a cast. And so imagine suddenly. They kept saying, well, there's, we think there's enough, there's got to be a better actor out there. And we're like, no, he's our friend now. We yeah. love him now. You can't <laughs> get rid of him. Kelly, you said on the show, it was love at first sight. Mark, you said in that clip, you were, was it, you, you, you weren't really thinking about her. You were just really focused on getting a job. Did you know? She said she knew. What did you know in that moment? I knew that I had enough clothes for three days and that I needed to get a job in New York. So I was really concerned about that. I, had, I didn't think I had a chance with this one. I'm, I'm happy with the it's way it turned, turned out. turned out well. So then was it love at second sight? Like when did you start to pay more attention <laughs> to this scene partner? Um, well, I mean, I was smitten right. I definitely was smitten right away, but it's more of like, I mean, it was my first job, and like the idea that I would even have an opportunity to date someone that I was—I it was just—it just blew my mind. I, I couldn't even go there. I was just so excited to be, you know, to be in New York and again auditioning. Um, but we started going out in groups. They were really, really good. The, the cast was really, really good about um, doing things together, and um, we'd go out in groups of like eight, ten, twelve people. And then, you know, about a month later, it'd be like, you know, maybe six people, and then it'd be down to four people, and then it was just Kelly and I. Um, it was like a, long, me, it was a long process. It was a long process. I'm like, oh my God, we're, we're on a date, just the two I'm of on us. On a date, yeah. It was like, is, are we date? Is this a date? Yeah. But I mean, I was, I was watching the numbers. I was only watching the numbers of people we go out with, and then it started, as soon as they started dwindling, I knew that, that the odds were getting pretty good that um, I would end up at least one time on a date with you without, without really having to ask. But Mark, when you, uh, when you then originally went in for Menteo and, and you landed the role, what, what got you really excited about that first storyline that you, you got to be part of? Uh, you know, that I was working with, I mean, everybody in this Zoom room here. I got to work with Eva and Sydney and uh, of course Kelly. Um, and at the time, um, Keith Hamilton Cobb. I was like thrown into a nice, big, juicy, story-rich um, type of lane for an actor. So I was, that, that was exciting. I, you know, I got to work a lot. 
Um, I was so just so excited to be living in New York and not having to borrow money from my parents. <laughs> um, it was a dream. It was really, really a dream. Sydney, um, they've all talked about their auditions. Was there anything uh, unique about about yours and landing the role of Julia? You know, I, I, I don't remember auditioning or, or having a screen test. I suppose I must have. Um, but I, I just remember uh, that the character was supposed to be kind of like this hellcat. You know, Maria was the good girl and did everything right, and they wanted that counterpoint. And it was kind of funny because over time, Julia, it just, all of that kind of went away. <laughs> she, she became like the tamest, the tamest kitten in the litter, you know. And I remember when I started on the show, um, Kelly, I think you were being held hostage at the time. Haley was bound and gagged in a basement for like three weeks. Literally, we kept going, are they gonna take the gag off today? You were there forever. Somebody was Again, always kidnapping I, you. I was such a good actress. Any <laughs> chance they got to put a gag in my mouth and stop me from speaking, they utilized that opportunity. Like, what if we put Haley in a cave? What if we drop her down a sewage system? What if we just put a gag in her mouth? My very favorite story about Kelly is when she was pregnant with Michael and she was in, the, in, in Wild Wind and she's walking across the, uh, the, for some reason she's walking from one side of stage to the other in the scene. And we hear like the voice of God in the speaker system, cut, Kelly. She's like, she's like nine freaking months pregnant at this point. <laughs> Kelly, can you suck your stomach in please? We can see that you're pregnant. <laughs> True story. <laughs> it's a true, true story. story. True story. True story. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I can't. There's a person in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you, What do you do about that? Maybe yeah. reframe the shot. They, they gave her a plant to carry across. That's right. Yes. A, yeah. a, a, I, mean, I, a plant. Yeah, I carried plants. I carried plants. I carried books. Yeah. Books. I was hidden behind sofa cushions. Other people. A mm -hmm. lot of tight close-ups. Yeah. Eventually they, eventually they buried me alive in a cave up to my eyes because I was so <laughs> pregnant that the only part of me that did not look pregnant was the, my eyeball because every other part of my face looked pregnant. Wow. Well, you know, these, these Hollywood workarounds, the behind the scenes secrets we're revealing here. <laughs>My children was always at the forefront of telling stories that we see and live every day, but weren't necessarily being told, you know, prime time or even in films. We're talking about, you know, inter, uh, interracial relationships, same sex marriage. So, how monumental or refreshing even was it for all of you to be part of a, part of a major storyline about a, a Latin American family in daytime television? What, you know, what were those conversations like between all of you even? Well, for me, it was like when you're in a real family, you don't look at the people next to you and think about their hair color or their eye color or where they may be from. These are just my people, you know? And so I guess I was always surprised when somebody would ask the question. I was like, I don't know what you're saying. I don't understand what you're talking about. <laughs> and then, you know, because they were just, they were my family. And then, you know, playing the, um, the Noah Julia storyline evolved in such an unusual way for soaps because um, they had never intended to put the two characters together. And they just kind of, it was, a, it was a relationship they needed to tell part of a story. And then they kind of realized, well, that sort of works. So what if we did this? So it grew as organically as a natural relationship would. So that again, I was sort of like, what's everybody talking about? What's the issue? I just didn't kind of get it. But um, looking back, I, I, I guess it was a big deal. <laughs> yeah, when, when did the, the importance of that become kind of obvious in, uh, to you? I, I guess immediately, because people talked about it and made a big deal out of it. Um, and, and that was nice. But to me, it was always, I, I always just felt that they were responding to Noah and Julia, you know, because they had a great relationship. <laughs> and that's what Keith and I worked to show was how two people function. And then, yeah, if you want to get into what they look like or where they come from or how they're different, that's fine. But really for us, it was about the relationship. Uh, of course, Mark, Sydney, and, and Eva, you all played siblings. Kelly, you got to marry into the family. So um, we, I feel like we're seeing a bit of it here, but how much of that dynamic played off screen as well? 
Well, I mean, all of it, really. Eva is godmother to our first born son, Michael, and, um, you know, it, they, the, the three of them were like siblings, and so they became my siblings, but, you know, like I said, I, even and I had, like, a full-on relationship before everybody else. Like, we were just, just yeah. wildly in love, you know? It, she was, we were sisters, and we yeah. have sisters, but we were, we also were each other's sisters. Yeah. Um, and, and so, you know, and that, ca- and that carries forth to this day. Um, so we, you know, we just are all very uh, bound together. And I think Eva, though, Eva's most like, she's like the person that is in charge of the yearbook or the high school reunion. <laughs> Eva keeps in touch with everyone. Like Eva yeah, keeps in, in touch yeah. with That's... every single person. She's the grown up. She's the cheerleader. She is like, guys. You know, did you hear so-and-so had a baby? Like, she just keeps us all connected to each other. I kind of was the oldest, too, in that, in, in our, in our group. Yeah. I mean, I, I, well, you did play a brain surgeon, so you did have the authority. I did have, yeah. (laughs) I remember, I remember early on uh, when I was, when I just, after my third screen test and I was, uh, you know, I got the job that Sydney would work with me on scenes and stuff. So like a big sister, she would. (laughs) <laughs> take care of like are you sure you know this and we do like little like you know acting exercises and to <laughs> make sure I didn't suck too bad and I'll never forget when Sydney tried to teach me French and wrote little post-it notes all over her dressing room <laughs> and my dressing room so that like when we were run line she was and <laughs> <laughs> yep I was the middle child there you go <laughs> <laughs> Sydney Sydney in real life though has like Sydney has one of these like friend groups where everybody is the most talented, whatever they are. So, you know, and then you show up and I'm like, okay, we are Sydney's least talented friends. Um, <laughs> so let's just provide lots of wine or something. Well, um, we're so- certainly good at getting together and drinking wine. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I was going to ask. How often do those get togethers get to happen? Now we're all pretty spread now? out now. We're all in different states. Yeah, it's really tough. I see Sydney when she comes out. Every once when she'll come to LA and she'll let me know. And and um, but but even I so, I, think, I get to see, see Kelly and and we and uh, Kelly and Mar- you know uh, John just passed away. It's already been a month, which is crazy. And um, and Kelly and Mark were first on the phone. Uh, Sarah was actually first on the phone. Yeah, she Sarah. She let us know. Yeah. She literally called us when my daughter Kaya and I were sitting in the hospital room. John was already on life support and he was um, unresponsive, but we were singing to him and playing his music and telling him we loved him. And Sarah called and she said, put the phone by his ear. I want to talk to him. And so we put the phone. So she got a chance to say goodbye to him, which was really cool and say what she wanted to say. And then, um, and, uh, and then we had like that hour with him and then they took him up to ICU and then we couldn't go up there. And then he passed later that night. But, and I immediately heard from Kelly right after uh, I we heard it from Sarah, but it was a really, um, you know, she used to call John GP, which was short for grandpa, but he wouldn't let her call her that. So, <laughs> so she, she even said on the phone, come on, GP, you've got to do this. You know, I love you and, and uh, you got to, you know, make it for us. And yeah. he, it was his time to go, but yeah. Usually well, times, yeah. It's hard to be in so many different locations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and of course, I, I think fans who are, are going to be watching this will know, of course, we're talking about John Callahan who played uh, Edmund Gray. And, and of course, uh, Eva, we're, we're sending our condolences to you and, and your uh, daughter, Kaya, with him. Um, I, I do want to ask, do all of you remember the first time you met John? Yeah, I think so. I, I have a pretty good, I mean, I like the, I'll go last, you guys, because you guys are wait. I mean, no, let's, I let's start thinking, with Eva. My dressing room was right next to his. <laughs> And, your, uh, your dressing room was next to his? Is that it was said? right next to his, yeah. So I, uh, it, was, uh, it, it was a very neighborly thing. You know, you come in and make sure that you, you pick up the milk bottle in your mail and, you know, you talk about the garden and <laughs> whatever you're doing. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and so he'd leave his door open. His, he would always be willing to kind of talk to anybody. And there were some days when it was just nice to kind of lean on the door and go, John, oh, my God, this scene today. And he always had time. There was always a perspective. He would always find some way to get you motivated that you can do it. 
because it's not impossible. And it was, it was um, always a big help to lean on his door. John and I were um, neighbors. Like we, I, I lived above him in the same building, and we would um, perform at on the weekends. We would do appearances at comedy clubs together. I don't know how he brought me into that. I don't really know how it all originated, um, but so we spent an enormous amount of time together. You know, like I, I, I remember when he fell in love with Eva. I remember it really well it was like it's like a vivid memory in my mind and and um so i, I spent an inor inordinate amount of time with the two of them to i mean to the point where i talk about like a third wheel it's like i could <laughs> i could hear their i could hear their thought process like are we really taking your little sister out again <laughs> on a friday night you know and <laughs> <laughs> it was fine. I had no problem interloping. I never took a hint. Just, you know. It worked so, out great. Uh, you were our beard because we were still on the DL at that point. Like, I, we really knew we were dating. Yeah, people were like, they're not dating. They're Come with Kelly. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Recently, you know, we've been taking these walks, Kelly and I, and, and when he passed away about a month ago, we started going over our head with, for, you know, going and, over and over the John, the John stories, and we just laughed <laughs> and just reminiscing. I remember one thing he really did, for, he called me um, the night before this big softball game that was taking place at Yankee Stadium. He said, hey, do you have a glove? <laughs> I said, I don't. He goes, get one. You might be playing in Yankee Stadium tomorrow. There was like this celebrity softball game that he was tied in in a huge, huge way. Mm. He would travel all over the place, and I got a, I got a, he goes, you may not play, but just in case, get one. And I got the glove and he got me and he called me that night and he said, you're, you know, you're going to be playing. And oh, it was such a, such a big, um, big, uh, you know, deal for me, this young, you know, this, this, this big baseball fan, but he always took care of us. He always took care of me. It's, you know, I, I truly miss him. Eva, your, your first time uh, meeting him. Do you recall? I, I do. Um, the first time I met him, he was working with my husband at the time, John O'Hurley. And they were playing brothers on Santa Barbara. And I met him briefly one time when he came over the house because they were going to go off to play golf. And, um, and that was actually, that was beef. I think that was before O'Hurley oh, and I were married um, <clears throat> when we were just dating. And so that was... The only time I met him until a few years later when I ended up getting all my children. And the second time I met him was him rounding the corner in the dressing room hallway. And I was my first day and <clears throat> I was coming in, just coming up from out of the wardrobe room because I was meeting the wardrobe people for the first time and doing my fitting and things like that. And, came, and he came around the corner and I just remember seeing this big beaming smile. And, uh, and I, and I'll never forget, I will never forget. And he was like, oh, you're here. And <laughs> <laughs> it was the biggest, most loving welcome. It was really great. And, and uh, we didn't have storyline or anything right away. It was really, it was really me and Kelly and, uh, and James Kybert. And um, they, they started me off pretty slowly, probably because I couldn't say a single freaking medical word. But. Oh, I'm sorry. You had the most. They gave me the worst. The dialogue was the worst. The worst. It was, the it was like worst. a nightmare. I yeah. just remember being. I was like, "Oh, it's my nightmare. Thank God I don't play a brain surgeon." <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I thought they might fire me after that first couple of weeks. Would you guys say are are soap opera fans more um, dedicated, loyal, crazed than uh, fans of of other shows? You know, primetime movie because because of the the fact that you were on every single day, and there was almost that feeling of of getting to know the characters better. Oh yeah, definitely, and and I think that that was also kind of um, something that people didn't always want disturbed. Um, so. Hmm. you were referred to as your character name. Hmm. And I would often introduce myself, what's your name? And, oh, I'm Sydney. And they'd be like, no, 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 you're Julia. So anyway, like it, <laughs> it was, I had to stay Julia for, for a lot of people. And I was happy to do that. That was fine. Um, but yeah, I do think our characters and what they went through 
uh, did mean a lot to people who could somehow get some catharsis from what we were going through. And um, that was a nice feeling, uh, meeting people to say, gosh, you know, I had a really tough time. And um, I just had to tune in every day because, you know, I, I felt um, uplifted or, or comforted by watching you. That's nice. My storyline for a while was um, I had a, a an infertility storyline. So I had this, I had a similar experience, Sydney, where people were, would reach out or the fan letters would come in and, and they would give me, you know, because they watched you every day, they, I think they felt like they know, they knew us in a way that they don't um, connect to nighttime people who are on once a week or feature film people that are like somehow a cut above and outside, you know, the realm of real connection. And we are, we were their friends. Like we really were, Sydney, like you said, it was like, I think there was a comfort and, um, and a connection and a knowing. And so I would get these long stories of people's lives saying this was my whole fertility story. And, and, um, and, and it was really moving. For me, I think it was just my, my character was constantly in jeopardy in some way. So um, I think that people, like I said, people that were struggling or having some sort of, um, no matter what, whatever was happening in their lives that was that was bringing them down, they would look to my character like, well, my life isn't as bad as Haley's. <laughs> so I think it was maybe that was what people would respond to with me was that I was always like on the precipice of a disaster. Who for each of you was your favorite character to, to share a scene with? Or who did you feel like your character maybe had the best chemistry with? Well, I, I loved every day that I worked with Keith. Um, I think because uh, he, he always worked really hard to make sure that um, Noah's voice was really authentic and that that we were doing something with the relationship that we weren't phoning it in and so i really enjoyed the work that that went into that and he's funny and sweet and it was it was a we always had a good time and which is really nice when you're working five days a week and you're doing 30 pages of dialogue a day friday page 150 of dialogue and you can't see straight or remember your name it's nice to have somebody to play off of who's going to be supportive but i, I wouldn't want to pick there were Every, everybody was a gem. I loved yeah. working with Susan. I loved working with Walt. I loved working with Torsten. And I mean, you just, everybody was wonderful in their own way. Walt and John were the most fun. Yeah. Like the, oh, yeah. if you worked with Walt and John, you would be on the floor laughing and you're, and you're thinking, it's a funeral scene, we have to stop. We have to pull ourselves together. Yeah, my favorite, obviously I'm sitting, I'm sitting with my favorite uh, scene partner. Um, Fair enough. Ever. But I would love, I would love watching um, Michael Nader and John uh, fight, fight oh out gosh, it was these two peacocks, oh, oh, two God. peacocks and they would like, the lighting had to be, they would, and it was all, it was all very, you know, they were, they laughed at themselves. But it was also just so oh, fun to watch those two scenes. Oh and God. we would like, if they had a scene with each other, we watch. would all go up on set. <laughs> like, let's get popcorn. One of those <laughs> moments, okay. And they played brothers, so they had that, that rivalry. Yeah, they, they but the uh, best, the best were the Wild Wind dinners. When we were all um, together at a Wild Wind dinner best. table, and we could bear, we would be in so much trouble because- <laughs> They were always we yelling at us like, like, shut up. Stop <laughs> laughing, stop oh jerking around, you guys. We have to get serious and get through these scenes. No way could we be serious and get through those scenes. We're so funny. Mm. There's obviously a, a lot that we could cover here, but um, as we kind of approach the end, I want to kind of start to talk about the end of uh, the show. How did each of you feel about your, your individual times as they were coming to an end? For me, it was a really uh, hard decision to leave the show. But um, having said that, I was planning on leaving the show anyway because we were, nobody knew, but we were pregnant with our second child. And anybody that works on a soap opera knows that the hours are it, it inexplicably long like you it's a one hour show but it really is like filming a movie in a day so if you can imagine it usually takes you know a few months to shoot a film we did that in a day so yeah. there was really very little um time
time. And if we wanted to see our son, we would bring him to work, which is not, you know, you don't necessarily want to raise your child. At a <laughs> people are still smoking. Yeah, people indoors. Were like, oh, still smoking indoors then. And, and so we were, and, and so I had made the decision, you know, I'll leave the show, yeah. you know, we'll t- eventually we'll tell them that we're going to have a baby and then, and then I'll just give them enough time because my contract was ending anyway. And then I wound up getting the talk show, which is a much easier schedule, especially if you are a working parent. And so I wound up doing both shows until the end of my soap opera contract and then I just I remember the last day that we shot and they, they bring you a cape on your last day and um I remember I just when you know I planned we left at the same time and I was okay completely okay with it I was like all right this is what I'm gonna do I, you know I'm leaving the show I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that and I kind of had didn't really like think about it but I grew up I, you know I met my wife there I had my my you know we and my, it was. It felt like a real when I that day that we left. I didn't I, go. I didn't go to the cake because I was too emotional. About yeah, it. I, I couldn't, couldn't. I couldn't let couldn't, my mind. I go was there. so emotional. Yeah. I mean, it felt like a like it was just like a. I felt like know, we were dying. dying. <laughs> it did. It feel like a death. It yeah. definitely like feels like a death, death yeah. of a big yeah. chapter of your life of this big exactly. beautiful magical chapter of your chapter, life. Chapter, yeah. With all of these intricate yeah. memories because you've yes. got your character and your person. You know, right. you're, it's so true. And all the crew there that were a part of your life, and you're just you're you're walking out of this this building, and you you know, it's just, I don't know. It was. It was I'll never forget that really walk. Emotional. I'll never forget yeah. that walk. The last walk out of the building, and actually, it like makes me like yeah. Yeah. really emotional. Yeah, really yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I I had two different goodbyes, mm-hmm. um, and the first one was just an extra, You know, it was an extraordinarily emotional day because we we finished shooting a scene and then they had the the cake (laughs) episode planned right after the scene. And what we had been shooting was like our very emotional goodbye video that we were leaving family and friends. And so sitting there just talking about, you know, when the wind blows, remember us, (laughs) and then, you know, all of a sudden it's all over and there's nothing to do except eat cake and go home. My second time around was just kind of three years of fun and, and seeing everybody and reliving it. And, and I also had a son and it was, a, it's a different, it's difficult. Um, my contract was coming to an end and um, so there was nothing particularly appropriate about how Julia left the show. She just got shot and died. And that was pretty, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was, it was very anticlimactic that time around. <laughs> but she can always come back. Don't forget. She can always oh, come back. Sure. You know, yeah. you can get shot in the pancreas and snap right out of that. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was what was so dangerous about our exit. Our exit, we just left, which means, oh, we're goners. We're I was like, oh, no, we're just leaving? They're not killing us? <laughs> if they kill you, you can always come back. <laughs> you just walk away, you are never, never going to be seen never. again. <laughs> That's true. On Bold the Beautiful, I went upstairs at a party once, and I never came down again. I rest my case. Why was All My Children able to resonate with generation after generation of TV audiences? Well, I think that Agnes Nixon created, um, it wasn't a TV show. It was families, a series of families living their lives openly, honestly, and connected through this town, Pine Valley, this sort of magical, fictitious town. And, you know, whatever was going on in the lives of the people of Agnes's community, her friends, her family, um, that I think all became what what we um, had the privilege of playing out on the show, which is why it connected so much with the at-home audience is because it was rooted and grounded in such reality. I agree. Perfectly put. I, I yeah, I that really, that, that was beautifully said. <laughs> Given what you said there, uh, what was the secret to the show's longevity? 41 years is a long time. I think because every generation would have this younger generation come up watching it. You know, I, I, have, I don't think there's a single person I've met that was an All My Children fan that hasn't said to me, I started watching because my mom watched it when I was little. Started right. watching it when I was six, or I started watching it when I was 10, or my mom would not let us change the channel. We had to watch it. 
And, um, or I started watching it in college or my girlfriend watched it. And so I had to start watching. So I just think that it kept bringing up generation after generation of fans. It really is an updated modern melodrama. Um, is something that I, I think human beings just respond to because that's sort of what our lives feel like, even though it may not be, you may not be having the exact storyline. It might not be quite as, as out there, but it feels like that. And um, I, so I, like, I, like I said before, I think it's the catharsis that a lot of people experience. Two more questions here. This is a big, broad one, but maybe you've all had many years to think about this. What is the legacy of All My Children? Oh my gosh. As being the best soap opera ever. There yeah. Yep. <laughs> I think, I do, but no, but seriously, yeah. I think, you know, as far, as far as, you know, the actors, as being an actor on the show, not, you know, and not so much, I didn't grow up watching it, but I thought it was one of the cool ones to be on if we were waiting. You know, I'm sure everybody feels like they're on a cool one, but I'm sure <laughs> they're on some of, there are some ones, there are some of those shows that people think like, I'm on a clunker. You know, you didn't feel like you were on a clunker. <laughs> yeah. You felt like you were on a fancy one, right? And as far as him not watch, as far as him not watching the show, his mom told me he learned how to speak English watching true. the show. So That's true. obviously he saw the show That's true. at some point. That's true. That's true. But I also saw a bunch of clunkers as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think the show produced a lot of really good actors. I think that our show was known for its acting. Some of the other shows were more known for having cue cards. I can't even imagine having worked with cue cards. I think the show really, All My Children really prided itself on, on its work, on, on, you know, on good work. It was all about the work. It really was never about anything but the work. I mean, um, it was very it, funny. We would all meet up at the um, daytime Emmys, right? And so you would get to see all of the other casts of all the other shows. And there was always like such a slickness, like everybody looked amazing, like they had been getting ready for a week or something. And we were usually just coming from work <laughs> to the daytime <laughs> Emmys. <laughs> like, we were just rolling out of the scene up to the daytime Emmys. Because it was just about the work and nothing else. And if you won an, an Emmy, then good for you, good on ya. Yeah. Fantastic, you still have to work tomorrow, so don't stay out too late tonight. Last question, you guys ready? I'm sure you're asked all the time. Is there any world where there could be a reboot of the show, even if it's weekly in prime time? Would, would you consider that being something that could happen? And, and would you go back to it? I have always thought that's what it should be. Reimagined in nighttime, once a week, nighttime show with real camera, like, you know, shot like a nighttime show instead of being shot like a daytime show, which is really dated. And I think that's why all the shows are falling. You know, it, it, they look dated. They just have not come up with the times, which is too bad. And that, that's why they're we all can, dying off. We've had this discussion yeah. about a million times. Mark yeah, and I Kelly and I have totally. a million times. It's like, of course this show is, all other shows stem from daytime shows. I mean, really, if you think about it, like primetime um, uh, melodramas stemmed from the daytime storylines that they saw. Um, I mean, was, like, they, were, they were nighttime soaps yeah. and, and they still exist. And I, and I think, uh, you know, to me, All My Children was one, one of those great, great like benchmark shows that a lot of shows sprung from. Yeah. Iconic. Yeah. Sydney, if they could bring you back to life, would you do it? <laughs> <laughs> well, if they could, I, I wouldn't see any reason not to. <laughs> 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 well, I think, I think an answer like that might give a lot of people hope. Uh, Kelly Ripa, Mark Consuelos, Eva LaRue, and Sydney Penny, thank you all so much. This has been great. Thank, thank you. you. And you were great. This is really fun. Oh, yes. no. Thank you so thank much. You.